Hello, it's Duncan. A couple of episodes ago, I experimented with using JetBrains Juni to learn and repeat a complicated refactoring. The results were good in parts. The cool kids seem to be impressed by Claude Code, so today I'm going to repeat the experiment to see which I prefer. Then, really, it seems to lose its presence of mind. This is the episode where I used Juni to replay refactoring. I'll put a link over there somewhere, and I think it's worth watching if you haven't seen it yet. For Claude Code, we're going to have a bit of a change of format. Instead of showing what happens live, like I normally do, I think we'll just have a look at an interaction that happened earlier. That's because, well, it just worked and shocked me that it did. And also, Claude Code costs quite a bit of money, money that I don't really own back from this channel. So let's have a look at IntelliJ. Here we are, and I'm going to work on a branch, Claude Code Play, where I've rewound so that the latest commit has the refactoring that I want to produce. So I've performed a refactoring for delete items acceptance contract, but we have add items acceptance contract to do in the same sort of way. I've installed the Claude Code plugin, but I couldn't really find any user interface to it, and it didn't install Claude Code itself. So I opened a terminal, here it is, and Claude commanded nothing, so I went somewhere and found some instructions, which is npm install Anthropic AI Claude Code. I'm not all that chuffed about this minus G, which installs it globally for npm, but it was quick and easy. Once I'd done that, Claude worked, and at some point this command line tool offered to open a browser and let me authenticate with my Claude account. So that's what I did. I didn't need to generate an API token. I ignored these tips for getting started. In fact, I didn't even notice this command and escape to launch Claude in your IDE. But I started with asking it to tell me about the last commit, which was this one. And I think the green bits are the things that it's doing. And it's analyzed that and said, this commit refactored the delete items exceptions contract to use an actor pattern. And it has summarized the key changes. And actually, I think that's done a very good job. So I issued another command. I want you to apply the same sort of change to add items exceptions contract and its implementations. It says, I'll do that. And this is its plan as a set of to dos. So find and examine add items exceptions contract, update the actor class and so on. It then starts executing here. You can see the individual bits of that, searching for files and tests, reading the files that it's found. And now at this point, it needs to update the actor class to include an add method. And what happened at this point was that it opened this actor class in an IntelliJ window and offered to allow me to accept the diffs. It also gave me the option of it just doing things, which I took. So we can see that it very logically added an add to the actor to go with the delete that was already there. And it added this thunk in the fixture in the same vein as the deletes. Moving on. It now needs to refactor the add item acceptance contract to use the actor paddle. And here it's very faithfully copied the delete item contract, even naming the actor Allison as we had with the delete items. And it seems to have its own little bit of housekeeping here about global search and replace. I think this is saying that code was trying to replace this ad with Allison ads, but found that there were two occurrences where it only kind of expected one, but that has happened. It now needs to implement the ad in the different actors. So off it goes, you can see the changes here. I don't think at any point it's tried to compile anything yet. It's just applying the changes that it's seen from the commit. Now it says I need to create separate HTTP add actors and HTTP no HMX add actor classes. So it creates an add actor and it creates a no HTMX add actor. That's all good. It can then use those in the two tests. It moves some stuff around. It deleted functionality from where it's no longer needed. So more of much the same. And this has been really quite quick, maybe three or four minutes at this point. Moving on, still not running any tests or compiling, but it's got to be said, writing solid code. And the explanations you can see here are all pretty good. There are a few places where I asked for my permission to delete or move files. And again, in those places, I just said yes and do it for anything. Moving on. All good stuff and quite a bit less random than Junior was, to be honest. At this point, it looks like we had an add actor rather than an actor that would support add and delete. But it seems to have decided to merge them because here we go from its change, which is there's a playwright add actor to there being a playwright actor. And the same thing here when we're using HTTP. It's all very good. And here it declares success. Now, to be fair, I haven't actually told Claude Code that I have any tests or that it should run them, but it doesn't appear to have done that off its own back. So I tell it to run the test, please. 
off it goes and at this point it discovers that it doesn't actually compile it has a compilation error that it successfully diagnoses says it'll fix that and then really it seems to lose its presence of mind it takes a long time to work out how to fix that problem we get here the issue is persistent let me try to debug this by temporarily removing one of the actors and see if the other one compiles there's some sort of reasoning here now I have different errors but this one shows that HTTP actor is actually compiling fine let me restore that file by here it's decided that it has issues with the correct import and here you can see that it's actually just trying the compile test Kotlin with some debug in order to find out what the issue is eventually it seems to go back to first principles find the place that it is actually working let me simply remove the duplicated function of the actor files and use the ones from add out HTTP tests and that that doesn't really seem to work it bounces around a bit still no joy the same error persists let me try a completely different approach maybe there's a problem with a file or character encoding issue let me completely rewrite this one using the exact pattern from the working code so very much monkey see monkey do but great it compiled successfully it applies the same fix to another file runs the tests all the tests are passing it says it has successfully applied the actor pattern to add items acceptance contract similar to the delete items acceptance contract so let's go and have a look at the diffs in fact i think instead of the diffs let's compare the add and delete versions so we already had the delete items acceptance contract let's compare that with the add item acceptance contract we seem to have an unused import at the top but the pattern of having allison as the actor passed up the constructor chain is the same and we have allison deletes has been translated into allison adds so we kept the tests that we have and moved them over to the actor the actor itself well that's now gained this add method which is what we wanted the add items directly tests hmm, this direct add actor is a bit suspicious what's in the delete items test here it is oh that's exactly the same code so i think the add item directly test should just use the direct actor making that unused and simpler the HTTP tests add item HTTP tests has an HTTP version and an HTTP version with no HTMX and those actors so the actor has a delete and an add and we're only using one of them so it's okay in the HTTP case what about our playwright actors well here we are in the add item browser tests here is a single playwright actor and it has the delete and the add so returning to the commit I think we've reviewed all those files and apart from a vestigial actor that we've just removed i think the claw code has done a pretty perfect job let's see whether ai assistant agrees well it's not being drawn on the quality let's commit that and just check that we can run all the tests and we seem to be good a couple of code analysis issues one is the show running property let's just delete that what else is there Ah, oh, we have our context receivers that's work in progress. On a sample of one, I was very impressed with Claude Code. It did the entire job in about 10 minutes with only the intervention of me telling it to run the test and it discovering that it had written uncompilable code. But I'm reasonably convinced that we could give it instructions to always run the tests. The same task, Juni took an awful lot longer and required a lot more direction. I think a lot of the difference in the time taken was that Claude Code wasn't refactoring by making changes and seeing what breaks in the compile. It seemed to reliably move things from one place to the other without leaning on the compiler. Looking at my account on Anthropic, you can see that code was using Claude Sonnet 4, which is expensive. And that whole interaction took basically 3.4 million tokens in and 23,000 tokens out. The cost of all that? Well, quite a bit under $2. It looks like I used 9 cents of Opus 3 the day before. So I think that's five thirds of a dollar for about 20 minutes work. In comparison, it's very hard to know the cost of Juni. I really don't know what this means, except that this bar seems to go down. And for some reason, I seem to have two accounts. That said, full disclosure, JetBrains do fund these licenses, whereas I'm paying for Claude out of my own money. I must say, so far, I really like the Claude interface. It's a very good, rich text command line with some IntelliJ integration. In this case, it did a very good job. 
but I don't yet have a feel for what jobs I'd give to Junior and what jobs I'd give to Claude Code. If you have a rule of thumb or a different experience to mine, then please let me know in the comments. While you're there, you could like this video, subscribe to the channel, or even head off and buy a copy of the book that I wrote with Nat Price called Java to Kotlin Refactoring Guidebook, details of which are on the show notes below. Thanks for watching.